this is part two of um, my video series, The Battle Plans of God for 2024. And uh, the subtitle for this part two is Some Wars Are Necessary. Now, this morning, uh, which is Saturday, uh, January 13, 2024, I was in my kitchen this morning cooking breakfast with my granddaughter, Talia, when I heard the Spirit of the Lord state this phrase to me. Some wars are necessary. Some wars are necessary. Immediately, I just knew in my spirit that the Lord wanted to speak to the body of Christ. So I immediately dropped what I was doing, ran into my home office, grabbed a pen and a paper because I knew I needed to capture, to write what the Lord is about to share with me, to share with you. Now in front of me, I'm going to be glancing down here from time to time because I have an outline that I want to make sure I cover everything that the Lord spoke to me. Now in front of me, I have five pages, um, but I'm not going to read directly from my notes. Like I said, I was just going to follow the outline that I have here and then I'll be looking off to my right a little bit from time to time to look up scriptures and to share them with you. Um, which at that time, I probably just will pop the scripture on the screen. Now, for you to get to full benefit of what the Lord wants to speak concerning this particular word, part two, some wars are necessary in the series Battle Plans of God of 2024. We got to go back in time and look at some points that I want to share with you guys about the American Civil War of 1861. We want to look at the, the cause and effects of that particular war. But before we do that, let's, let's look at a scripture, something King Solomon said that's um, ties right into this point I want us to uh, discuss in this section of the American Civil War of 19, I mean, 1861. Um, and we're going to go to, if I can spell it right, Ecclesiastics uh, chapter 1 and I want to read to you verses 8 and 9 excuse me and I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible starting with verse 8 it says all things are full of labor man cannot express it the eyes is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Verse 9. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. And what we're going to see in this discussion of this word that the Lord gave me is how the American Civil War of 1861 is intersecting right into the upcoming Civil War. That many of our leaders who have a right now word for the body of Christ um, of the happenings of beginning in this year that's going to directly affect the body of Christ. Now, there are three contributing factors as outlined in our history records uh, that was the contributing factor of this war. And I'm going to read these three factors just the way I have written on my paper in my notes. The first one was the continuous manufacturing of slavery in the slave states. The second one was the westward expansion 
And the third one was the election of Abraham Lincoln as the president in 1860. So these three, the combination of these three factors uh, was the cause that led to the effects, the, the, the happening uh, of the American Civil War of 1861. But what we need to be mindful of, even though in our historical books, these things were recorded as the cause. or So now, these three causes uh, was at the surface of why the American Civil War in, of 1861 broke out. But technically, when we look at closer look at examining this war, uh, the Civil War was more of a spiritual war than a natural war. And this is what God was bringing to my attention. The 1861 Civil War was God's war to set matters straight. It was his war of justice for those who were crying out to him about the injustice that was taking place in the world during that time frame. Um, you have the the uh, work evil works of men that was influenced by demonic forces uh, that was creating the environment where the people were suffering. And most of us, when we look at that time frame and we consider uh, the root of uh, the that particular civil war, we, we mostly identify with uh, the slavery that was attached to it. Um, the goal of freeing many blacks from the enslavement that they were in. But again, as important that was, it was much deeper than slavery, sexism, treating women um, as property, which it was another form of slavery. Um, the election of uh, President Abraham Lincoln um, and the manufacturing of these wicked men to keep such systems, such traditions, such institutions um, to continue. It was much deeper than that. This was a spiritual war. God responding to the cries of the people. Um, and again, as I pointed out, this spiritual war was against not necessarily flesh and blood, what we can see in the natural, but the evil demonic forces behind them. Let's look at another scripture. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, um, I'm going to start, usually I will read verse 2, but I'm going to start with verse uh, 2, and I'm going to go down to chapter 4. So again, that's chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting with verse 2, I'm going to read down to verse 4, and verse 4 is our main point. Verse 2, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceptively, but by manifestation of the truth, condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do, who do not believe, least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. To kind of sum that up in a nutshell, based on the discussion of what God was showing me in making the connection of the American Civil War of 1861 to what is coming 
beginning this year was the evil works of man tainted by sin. Sin involving slavery, greed, pride, and sexism of the devil through the use of men to enslave the populace through the institution of slave trade. You see, and I want to look at my notes very cl closely when I when I say this part because this was not new information per se based on the way it's recorded in history, but it was new information for me. Um, the 1861 Civil War is known as the most costless and the most deadliest war ever fought in the United States to date. Here, here is where Satan was trying to um, rear up his master plan because if he could not get the massive of people to serve him to the degree that he wanted to be worshiped, then he was going to destroy them. As John 10, 10, as John 10, 10 says, uh, let me just read it the way it is written instead of uh, uh, just quoting it. It says, the thief does not come except to steal to, and to kill and destroy. That's what the thief has come to do. And so the 1861 Civil War was the, more, the, the most destructive war that has happened on the American soil because that's what Satan was going or attempting to to do. If he could not have his way by enslaving the whole population, which he had already at that time enslaved a large number of the people, he had pretty much held captive a group, a class of people. Now, black people weren't the only ones, don't get me wrong, that was being enslaved. There were some whites. And there were uh, a quite a bit of Indians during that time frame that were being a slave too. But the bulk of the people that was impacted by that was the blacks. The goal was during that time frame for Satan to get everyone enslaved in his system with a few uh, individuals here uh, he controlling um, to oversee his plot and so when we read that scripture at 2 Corinthians particularly verse chapter 4 verse 4 see Satan was blinding the people's mind two ways he was blinding those individuals he was using to enslave others these corrupted evil men he had blind their minds to see the real truth of the gospel of the kingdom, which led them to do the things that they were doing to other individuals, holding people captive. And at the same time, he had hijacked the livelihood of many individuals, making them submissive to these wicked men and blinding their minds of what true freedom is under the law of God, under the kingdom of God. So, again, as I mentioned before, this led to the American War, Civil War in uh, 1861. And when God throw his plan by responding to the cries of the people, but it still ended up resulting in this major battle, this war of God, where 600 
more than 600, 200,000 people or soldiers die. Now that's just from what I read was just the soldiers. So you can, that's why I'm saying more than, because if you include others uh, that was impacted by the war, it was probably even much larger than that. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm reading through this slowly. So th this word may come off dry, but there's a lot of fruit in this word that the body of Christ need to heed to, to really take serious because this is going to impact us in what's coming. Not just my ministry and myself speaking about this, and God was very more detailed in this particular word. But you have other leaders in the body of Christ that speak about what's coming in this particular, beginning this particular year. So now we got to understand that slavery, greed, pride, and sexism was not at the root. It wasn't at the root of the 1861 Civil War. There were actually effects, the effects stemming from the root cause of the war. So if slavery, the expansion of, to uh, uh, the west, westward uh, land or territories, the uh, election of Abraham Lincoln as president, if these things were not at the root of the 1861 Civil War, then what was? The cause. Now remember, this is what Holy Spirit is bringing down to me. The cause of the 1861 Civil War was the heart of man. the condition and heart of man. Genesis. Chapter six, verse five reads uh, this way. Then the Lord said that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Jeremiah 17, verse nine. The heart is deceptive above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 7. Verse 24. Oops. Computer got stuck. Sorry, my computer got stuck just now for some reason. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but follow the counsel and the dictates of their evil hearts and went back and not forward. And went backward, excuse me, and not forward. And then Genesis 8, 21. Oops. And the Lord smiled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. The root cause of the 1861 Civil War was the heart of wicked men. Uh, their sin nature. <laughs>